Hey there, sure feels like a Friday today, not quite sure why. This is my early summer real estate market update. I know people think because the interest rates are high that the market is bad, but it's really not. So let's talk about that. All right, so first up is interest rates. I do believe the market is changing a little bit, so we're gonna talk about that. But first I wanna explain why interest rates are so high. So first of all, how are interest rates determined? Interest rates are determined by the 10-year treasury yield. There's the 10-year treasury yield, and then there's a spread that goes on top of that yield. That spread comes from the banking industry. They determine what it's going to be, and that spread is what the banking industry gets to keep. So it's the 10-year treasury yield plus that spread that equals an interest rate. Historically, the average over the last 50 years of the spread of the 10-year treasury is 1.72%. That means if the treasury yield is at 4% and the spread is 1.7%, that would give you a 5.7% interest rate. Right now, we are up in the high sixes, maybe even a little bit over seven. I always tell people I sell houses, not loans. I've got someone for that. But when this year started, 2023, the spread was at 2.7, one full percentage point over the 50 year average. As of the beginning of June, that spread jumped to 3.2%. So on a 3.69 yield with a 3.23 spread, we've got an interest rate of 6.95%. The only other times that we saw interest rates that high, a spread that wide. It was in the early 1980s. Those were pretty volatile times, and these are too. It's believed that this should ease up in the fall. It's reasonable to assume, and this is a quote from Odetta Cushy, the deputy chief economist of First American. It's reasonable to assume that the spread, and therefore mortgage rates, will retreat in the second half of this year, as long as the Fed takes their foot off monetary tightening. Even if that happens, it's very unlikely that we're gonna go back to the historical 1.7% spread. So that sounds bad, right? Gloom and doom. I'm here to tell you it's not, and here's why. In our market, we are seeing strong buyer demand, even though interest rates are high. And that's because in our market, we have people who are very cash strong. We had a buyer put in an offer on a property, $100,000 over list price. And this is at a this is at your average sale price. This is right around the five, 600 range. And you want 100,000 over and he lost. He had a very strong, I think he was putting 30% down. So very strong financial profile but they got a cash offer that was even a little bit higher. So, you know, cash really is king. Doesn't mean you can pay less. The cash offer still went very high, but it does mean that you'll beat out a comparable mortgage at almost any time. And that's happening a lot. So if you're thinking about selling your house, the odds of you finding a buyer are very strong, even though mortgage rates are high. However, what's happening though, those mortgage rates are potentially keeping our inventory levels low because current homeowners, if they have a loan and if their mortgage rate is 2.3 or 2.7 or 3.2, whatever it might be, very low, much lower than today's rates, why would they sell their property and take a mortgage at a higher rate when they're pretty happy where they are? Well, there's lots of reasons for that. One is Americans are sitting on far more equity than they probably realize. So it's possible that your house is worth more than you think it is, which means even though you have a mortgage, you may not have to have as big a mortgage on the house where you're gonna go. So there's lots of different reasons. 64.5% of potential sellers were more inclined to sell their home after speaking with a real estate agent. And that's because a real estate agent can lend some insight into what's going on, just like I just did in this video, to help you look at what your whole profile is from an investment perspective, an equity perspective, a financial perspective. And, you know, maybe we can get some more sellers out there if more sellers are raising their hand and saying, all right, tell me what's going on. There's a little plug there. So by all means, give me a call if you wanna figure out what your equity is. Real estate is still an excellent investment opportunity. It's an excellent idea to own a home. It is still a huge part of the American dream. In fact, 74% of Americans believe that owning a home is the number one feature of the American dream. 78% of Americans associate homeownership with the American dream. 
65% of Americans see homeownership as a means of building intergenerational wealth. And even the millennials and the Gen Z, 68% of them say that investing in real estate is a good decision. And 43% of them are considering buying an investment property. Real estate is here to stay. It's bricks and mortar. Everybody needs a roof over their head. Lots of reasons to own a home. There's tax benefits. There's social benefits. It gives you some stability. You can profit when you sell it, usually. 34% of Americans say that real estate is a great long-term investment. The best long-term investment, in my opinion, is owning real estate. Real estate goes up and down. It does, but it's cyclical. And on average, it's gonna go up. And look at this chart. This chart explains it precisely. Over the last five years, we've increased in value by 56% in five years. Since 1991, home prices have increased a whopping 290.2%. Can you look at these numbers and tell me that real estate is not a good long-term investment? So we're gonna wrap up this segment with a little bit of information about why it seems like the news is not sharing as positive a view as what I just said. It is accurate. They're not lying to you, but they're comparing today to the last two years, which were pandemic influenced real estate years. They were excellent years for the real estate market. We're calling them the unicorn years. But what's happening is when you compare things like foreclosures or home prices or home sales or showing traffic today to what happened in 2022 or 2021 or 2020, of course it's gonna look bad. Yes, there are definitely more foreclosures today than there were last year and the year before and most of 2020. However, there are still fewer foreclosures in 2022 than there were in 17, 18, or 19. So the unicorn years of 20 and 21, we really can't compare to that. We have to compare it back to the last time we had a regular or a normal real estate market. What you have to remember is when you're looking at the national news, when you're reading the newspaper, you just have to remember that real estate is local. It's local and it is better than it was before we had the pandemic. Let's forget, pretend those years didn't happen. That's all I got today. I hope I gave you some good information I hope maybe I piqued your interest or your curiosity about things because really the best part of my job is talking to people. I would love to hear from you. So please email me back if you got this in your email. Share this with a friend if you got this in your email. If you're watching me on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button, hit the little bell, you'll be notified every time I post a video. And find me on Instagram because I do a lot of good stuff there too. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. successful career. Jared, let's skip this part. Let's get rid of that. All right. The early 1800s. No, silly Jen. It was in the early 1980s.